everyone welcome back to my videos as the same with last week I can't see with my sunglasses up so if I go off frame I apologize but it's very bright out and I don't want to hurt my eyes uh, so today we're doing some more wild edibles we're back at just food farm um, Last week I said when I was here I found some pineapple weed on a walk so that's why I came back to show you guys the pineapple weed. And uh, the other plants I'm going to cover this week I think I have at home so that will be the only one from here. But I do have a couple of things I want to talk to you guys about um, before we get started. The first thing is is just a little disclaimer that I'm not a doctor or a naturopath or a knowledge keeper or a medicine man. Um, so if ever you're having symptoms for unknown reasons, you shouldn't just treat them and ignore them. You should consult with a professional, whichever, whichever you prefer from the list above, um, whatever works for you. Uh, if however you have symptoms and you know why they're being caused like if you're having if you have insomnia and you know why you have insomnia um, yeah go ahead feel free follow follow um, what I'm teaching you guys but if you have symptoms for unknown reasons it's always best to get them checked out before you start treating them yourselves um, the other thing is that um, just like other food allergies, any wild edible you can potentially have food allergy to. So always um, check, like consume small quantities of it before um, you start eating mass amounts of it, just to make sure you don't have food allergy. Um, there is one I'm going to cover today, it's the pineapple wheat that I mentioned that has a slightly higher occurrence of people having food allergies to it. So just test it out first to be safe. Um, and uh, all the plants that I covered last week and all the ones I'm covering this week, you don't have to come to a place like the farm to find them. You can easily find all of them around your neighborhood. Um, just be careful uh, that wherever you get them from is not a place where they spray harmful pesticides um, or herbicides because you don't want those on your food. Uh, and if you're not certain, it's always better to err on the side of caution. One thing I did learn since last week is how to tell the difference between um, the native plantain, so the, I think it's the black, I want to say the black seed, black tick, some, uh, I'll double check that, and the broadleaf plantain, which is the one that came from Europe, is the main key factor, hopefully this doesn't go out, is if you look down here, right down at the base here, the one that's native to Canada is purple. The one that is not native to Canada right here is um, greenish white. So this one is a broadleaf plantain. So this is pineapple weed and I don't know about you guys but this is something I grew up seeing everywhere and I had no idea what it was and no idea that it was edible. It grows in schoolyards and sidewalks and anywhere where there's disturbed uh, soil and like ditchy gravelly soil like you can see this is right along the pathway um, so pineapple weed is also known as a uh, wild chamomile or um, I'm gonna butcher this Ma matricaria discoidea um, and there are plants that look similar to it and the key way to identify it is if you pluck one of these off and crush it, it smells like pineapple and if you taste it, it tastes like pineapple. Um, I personally don't like eating them just like this because I don't like the texture of them. 
Um, but apparently they're good for relaxation and sleep just like um, chamomile is. So I'm going to take a few of these and I'm going to take them home and I'm gonna, I'll show you guys how to make some tea with them and then I'll let you know if it uh, works as well as chamomile does or not. Um, and the other thing is, is because of their pineapple-y taste, you can um, use them in things like uh, desserts or um, jellies. So I'm going to take a couple of these. If you want to know about oh, harvesting sustainably, you can see my um, video one. Like if you noticed, I went to take that first one and it wouldn't come, so I left it because that is not given. That plant did not want to come with me. So they're just all over here and I'm just going to take enough for a cup of tea. Oh, look, I went to go take it and the whole plant came off, so that whole plant was given. So I will take that whole thing. And uh, just grab a few more from around. Not given. Not given. And in case you're wondering, for those who did see my first video, I did offer tobacco um, beforehand off to the side because I didn't want to be leaving tobacco in the middle of the road. So that's about how much you need for one cup of tea, so I'm going to take that home with me. The only thing um, we should know about not um, about wild harvesting is if, you, uh, if it's a hot day, don't put this in a plastic bag. Because the, it just with the moisture and the heat and the plastic, it doesn't breathe and it will probably rot before you have a chance to use it. For the next plant, we've come back to my backyard because I don't know anywhere in Ottawa where more of it grows. It's literally like all along here, all in here, growing up the side of this plant, all over there. It literally grows everywhere in my yard. And this is wood sorrel, otherwise known as sourgrass. And I totally forgot to research the scientific name for it for you guys, so I will write that above. And the way you identify it is it kind of looks like a clover, but it's like three perfect hearts. Uh, where clovers are a little more um, ovalish, these ones always are three perfect hearts with a yellow five petaled flower and if you actually pluck this little flower off and eat it it's lemony so wood sorrel um you can use it you can make it uh tea out of it and drink it hot like a lemon tea or you can have it be cold and um drink it as a lemonade substitute. Um, you can just uh, take it off and toss it in a salad um, or you can use it to add flavor to soups or stews. It's high in vitamin C and oxalic acid so if you eat it in huge quantities it may cause some bowel problems but that is common for everything that's high in vitamin C and or high in oxalic acid. It can cause some digestive issues. It's also a good source of beta carotene and flavonoids, which are believed to help protect against cancer and heart disease. So I'm actually gonna harvest a bunch of this Yeah, my little plate here, my little selfie stick. <laughs> and I'm going to try making some of that lemonade 
and I'll make a video of it for you later. And the last wild edible we're going to cover for this week is maple seeds. Um, you guys might recognize these as uh, maple keys or some people call them helicopters. And the seeds are actually edible. But first I'm going to show you. So they can be very bitter when eaten raw. So you definitely want to cook them. But I just want to show you. So when they're green like this, that have just fallen off the tree, those are good. You see here they're starting to get more wrinkly and starting to brown, turn brown. You don't really want those or really brown like this. Um, it's not that they're inedible at that time, it's just that um, the older they get, the more bitter they get. And so with maple seeds you want to Gather them when the weather's warm. Once the weather goes cold, they tend to get bitter. Um, so you would gather a bunch like this one and you would soak these in water for an hour. It just makes them easier to peel so that you can uh, remove the seed here from the pod. And then uh, you can either roast them in the oven, uh, which you would do similar to like what you would do with them. Pumpkin seeds, so you'd lay them all out flat on a pan and season them whatever way you want, salt, pepper, a little bit of oil, um, anything else you might want on them. And then you roast them on 350 for eight to 10 minutes. And unfortunately I can't show you guys that because I literally had a hard time finding two good ones. It's a little late in the season for them, and most of the ones I found were like this, which is um, um, not good. The other thing you can do with them is you can um, boil them. So once you get the seeds out of these pods, you can uh, throw them in boiling water for 15 minutes. Uh, and these are good for you to snack on because they have protein and potassium and zinc and they're also a good source of omega fatty acids. So now we're going to make um, the uh, pineapple wheat tea and some wood sorrel uh, lemonade. Um, I have to be quiet because it's really late. I didn't want to make a tea that was going to help me sleep um, before I was ready for bed and I'm a night owl. So I'm going to show you what I've got prepared and then we'll go ahead and do it. So here I've got um, a pre-boiled four cups of water. Um, everything I found online for making the lemonade just said throw a handful of the wood sorrel into a pot of hot water but they never specified how much hot water so I went with four cups and then here for the pineapple tea I've got about I think it's about 12 ounces of hot water I don't have a kettle so I just got it from my coffee maker so unfortunately my counter is not big enough for me to be able to be in the shot um, while I show you guys this. So you're going to have to deal with just seeing my hands. So here's the pineapple weed we gathered. And I'm just going to, uh, I just want the flower part, so I'm just going to snip off. And then these ones are already snipped off. You only need about five or six, but I took extra because I like mine to be extra, make me extra sleepy. And there's one I missed. So this tomorrow I'm going to take outside and I'm going to go put it back in my garden to um, decompose and it will uh, give some nutrients back to my garden. So now this we're going to let brew for five minutes. So I'm going to set that aside. And then we have the wood sorrel. 
And I have some rooty bits, so I'm just going to get rid of the rooty bits. And then I got something other than wood sorrel here. So I'm going to cut that off. And you can see some of the wood sorrel has wilted because I did gather it earlier today. And then we're just going to take about this much. And we're just going to throw it all in this pot of hot water. And then we're going to give, oop, sorry, I'm going to give it a little stir. Just to make sure all of the leaves are in the water. Okay, so this we're going to leave for 10 minutes. Alright, it's been five minutes for the tea, so I'm just going to pour it in here to strain it. Now the thing when you're making tea um, with stuff that you've uh, gathered yourself is you can make it taste stronger if you let it steep longer. Um, I'm going with the five minutes because that's what was suggested and we'll see how it turns out. Um, I'm going to sweeten mine with Splenda only because I am diabetic and I can't have sugar. Well I can, just not in... I got to avoid it as much as I can. So. Let's see how it tastes. Cheers. Mostly just tastes like water with Splenda in it with a hint of something else. So if I were, I mean it doesn't taste bad, but if I were to make this again I would probably steep it for longer and I might even crush um, the flower heads to get a little more of the flavoring, but we'll see if it still has the chamomile effect or not. So you can see here that all the wood sorrel has turned this like mucky brown green color, but apparently I had more than just wood sorrel in here. I didn't check before I uh, before I put it in. Since I have no idea what this is and I have no idea if it's toxic or not, um, this whole batch is scrapped. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to report on that for you right away, um, but I will make a batch later on and let you guys know how it goes. All right, so next day report. Um, definitely the pineapple wheat tea um, relaxed me and um, I definitely slept better. I usually wake up two or three times a night and I only woke up once, so I was really happy with that. So I give it a thumbs up. I'll definitely try it again. Um, I'm not going to have time to retry the the lemonade um, my lawn got mowed so all my sorrel is really short right now so I'm gonna have to give it a few days to grow back um, before I can try it again but I will let you know in a future video how that turned out and that's it for this week so have a great week um, stay safe and I'll see you all later bye